Hello everyone and welcome back to the Tori and Ren YouTube channel. Before we get started with this two-part tutorial, I just wanted to apologize for not being as active on my channel as I was before. I was really busy and had a couple of things keeping me away from recording and sewing, um, but I was slowly working on these and I was really excited to share them with you, so I'm glad I finally can. But I will post a little update in the description box for anyone that's curious about where I've been. But getting started with this project, we're going to be making one of these compact foldable card wristlets and they're a larger expanded version of my compact foldable card wallets that I shared last year. And this was actually a request. If I can find the comment, I'll put it on screen. It was a request, so I was really excited to give it a go. So I'll show you what it looks like. So on each side, you have one of these flaps with snaps and they actually cover your card pockets so that your cards are nice and secure inside. You have four card pockets on each side, so eight total. And then inside, if you open up your zipper, you have that same division because this is folded. So you can put cash in here, you can put cell phones, you can put a passport, a passport does fit in here. So you can put a ton of different things, even makeup if you're going out somewhere since this is a wristlet. And then when we open up in here, we actually have a change po a pocket, sorry, not a pouch, a pocket. So you can put all of your change back here and not keep it in the main pocket, but secure under here. And just like the last one, you can actually open it completely flat or you can use the snaps and snap it closed. So I have a couple different ones here. You've already seen this one, but I'll show you each of the different ones. I have this one here. This one here with this little animal print on it. This one with the boots and the birds. I like to make a couple different samples just to give you guys some ideas of how you can use different colors, different fabrics and mix them up. We have this one here. This is actually the one we're going to be making in this tutorial today. So stay tuned for that one. I have this one with some little squirrels jumping around. This one with some bunnies. Some more little animals. I really like animal fabrics. And I love this one because it has a little bunny zipper pull. A couple of these I did use some really cool custom pulls. So I used a little acorn. I used this bottle opener pull here. It doesn't actually open bottles, but it's called that. And then I also added these little handcrafted little dangle charms. And then this is the last one. This one's actually meant to match one of my slings. If you watch my Sunday sling tutorial, this one's actually meant to match one. So I used the same fabrics. So I'll move these out of the way and we're going to get started. We're going to get started straight away with the pattern templates that come with the pattern if you purchased it. The link to purchase the pattern can be found down below, but if you don't have the pattern, don't worry at all. I'll be having all of the measurements and instructions in this video. But I do want to let you know before we get started that this is a two-part tutorial. You can find both video links down in the description box below. So if you follow along during this video tutorial, you can find the link for part two down below and you can move straight on to there once this one is done. But let's get started. Beginning with the cutting, if you purchase the pattern for this project from my Etsy shop, which will be in the description box below, it will have come with a full set of pattern piece templates that you can use to make the project. It will have also come with some labels that you can add to your pieces once they're cut out. This will help you keep track of the piece, the piece name, size, and what it's cut out of. These are really great if you're going to be making this project across a couple of days because you can just add them. So you can use quilting clips or pins and you can add them to your piece. And that way, when you can come back to the project, you don't have to worry about remembering what each piece was for. It'll have the name and size and everything on it. So these are really great for that. Now for the pattern piece templates, you're going to want to cut them out, sorry, print them out at a 100% scale or actual size to make sure that they print out the correct size. Now each of the pieces actually has the measurement listed on it. So when you print it out, you can double check that they measured the correct size. 
and a few of them do need to be joined together. So for example, I have piece K here, and they do need to be joined together before you cut them out of your fabric. Once they're joined together, they'll match the measurement that's listed on here for the piece. Now they also have letters and numbers. So piece K will have part one and part two that needs to be joined together, so K1 and K2, and together they form piece K. And that'll be the same for all of the pieces that need to be joined together. Pieces that don't need to be joined together will just have their letter. Now, because all of these pieces are rectangular and you also have the cut chart or sorry, the cut list, you can actually follow this pattern as a measure and cut instead if you prefer not using the templates. So if you don't have the pattern as well and you don't have the templates, you can also just follow the measurements and cut them out with your rotary cutter, ruler and cutting mat. Now, because some of these pieces do need to be joined together, I will be showing that next with piece A. I haven't joined it together yet, just to show you how to join them together if you do want to use the pattern piece templates. Afterwards, I'll be showing you um, each of the pieces, telling you what they're for and what their size is. So we're gonna move on to that. Once you have your paper pattern pieces printed out and cut out, you're going to join the pieces that need to be joined together. So I have piece A1 and A2 here to show you how. So you're gonna locate the edge that needs to be joined on each half of the piece. So right here and right here. It says join pieces A1 and A2 along this line matching the circles. So we're gonna do just that. We're going to line up this line here and match those half circles on the side and the circle here in the middle. So we're going to line it all up just like that. And on one of the pieces, you'll actually have this extra rectangle under here. That's meant to go under the other piece to help you when joining because it has something for this piece to sit on top of. So if I line my piece up, it'll look something like that. You can use some tape across here, or if you have a glue runner or double-sided tape, you can actually apply it right in here and then just attach your piece on top like that and it'll stay nice and flat. I used a glue runner, I used the Scotch Advanced Tape Glider and I applied my glue under here. And so my pieces actually sit nice and flat where they're joined. But again, you can also use tape along here. And if you're using tape, you can also apply a layer of tape back here just to hold this edge down as well. So you're going to do that to all of the pieces that need to be joined. The instructions will be on each of the pieces. And now we're going to move on to the cutting. So the measurements and what pieces you're going to cut from what. So similar to previous tutorials, I'm going to bring a completed wristlet and leave it here on the side so that when I introduce each piece, I can tell you where it goes on the wristlet so that you can better customize your own. So starting with print A, I'm going to slide my piece over here. You're going to need two pieces cut from pattern piece A, and that measures 11 and a half by 8 and a quarter. And as indicated on the pattern piece template, you're going to want the direction to run vertically, so this way. And these are for the card pockets that are on each side of the exterior. So as you can see, you have four on this side, that's one piece, and then the other piece is on this side, and it looks exactly the same. So I'm just going to close this back up. And leave that there. Moving on to print B, you're going to need one piece cut from pattern piece B, so I have it here, and that measures 12 and a half by 8 and a quarter, and as indicated on the pattern piece template, dire directional fabric isn't recommended for this piece because it's going to wrap underneath the wristlet and it will be upside down in some parts if you're using directional fabric. So I'm using this faux leather here, and I'd say it's a pretty lightweight faux leather. Of print B, you're also gonna need to cut one piece of piece C. So that measures one and three quarters by one and three quarters, and that's for our D-ring tab on the side over here. From print C, you're gonna need two pieces of piece D, measuring six inches by seven and a half. Again, if you're using directional fabric, you're going to want your direction to run vertically because these pieces are going to be folded like so. So if you have a part of your design that you want to be seen on the front of the flap here, because these are the flap pieces, you're going to want to have it in this top portion. So right up here of your piece. 
So I have my two pieces here. And like I said before, I kind of gave it away really early, but that's for the flat piece here and the other one on the other side for your wristlet. Of print C, you're also gonna need one piece cut from piece E, and it's a really long one. It's three and a half by 17 inches, so it's out of frame here. So that's my piece. And if you're using directional fabric, you're gonna want the direction to run this way as indicated on the pattern piece template. And that's because this piece is our wristlet strap. So the direction will actually run this way along the entire strap. Moving on to print D, these will now be our lining pieces. So you're first gonna need one piece cut from piece F, which measures nine and a half by eight and a quarter. And that's for the lining piece inside the main zipper pocket up here. That's for the one that's the center division. And directional fabric is not recommended for these particular lining pieces. If you choose to use another fabric for the change pocket lining pieces, you can use directional fabric for those pieces. But for the ones in here, it's not recommended because again, this piece is going to be that division. So it's going to fold like this. And if you're using directional fabric, it'll be upside down on one half. Continuing with print D, you're going to need two pieces cut from piece G, measuring four and three quarters by eight and a quarter. And this is lining for that same main pocket. It's going to be the outer sides. For the changed pocket that I mentioned previously, you're going to need one piece of print D cut from piece H, measuring four and a half by seven. This is the change pocket lining. This is the top piece. Now, when I say the top piece, I'm actually talking about the piece that's going to be attached to the top half of the zipper tape when we're sewing because it's slightly longer than the other one. So when we open up our change pocket, that's actually the piece that's visible right here. So that's piece H. I'm just going to close this up and I'll leave it right here so we can talk about the next piece. Oh, and again, like I said before, if you choose to use different lining fabric for this change pocket versus the main pocket, you can actually use directional fabric for these pieces. So if you're using directional fabric, I actually included that here. You can actually have it running vertically, so top and bottom. Just wanted to note that in case you wanted to customize your wristlet and include different lining. So the final piece of lining you'll need for this change pocket is piece I cut from piece, sorry, cut from print D and that measures three and a half by seven. So like I said, it's a little bit smaller and that's the one attached to the bottom half of the zipper that's visible under here. So it's this under one. I'll just close this back up now. So again, piece I cut from print D measuring three and a half by seven. Completely forgot to mention it, but again, if you're using directional fabric, the direction will run vertically for this piece as well for that change pocket lining. We also have a couple pieces of interfacing that we also need to cut from our pattern pieces, but I'm going to introduce those at the end and I'm going to introduce the hardware and stuff first. So getting right into that, you're gonna need one three quarter inch D-ring and one three quarter inch swivel hook for right here to attach our wristlet strap to our wristlet. Mine's twisted a little bit, but right over here, Next, you're going to need two pieces of number five or size five continuous nylon zipper tape. Mine is this olive tape with an antique coil. You're going to need one piece measuring eight and a half inches, and that's for this top zipper pocket up here. You're also going to need one piece measuring seven inches, and that's for this change pocket in here. Now, if you're someone that has a little bit of trouble adding in zipper pulls, you may want to make this change pocket zipper a little bit longer. And that's because you're going to have about this much tape to work with when adding in the pull later on in those steps. So if you have a bit tr of trouble and you want some extra tape to work with, you can increase this zipper tape. And then when the pocket's complete, you can actually trim off the extra zipper tape from the ends. So I have an example pocket right here. So if your tape is longer, you can actually just trim it off afterwards once the pocket is complete. Now the pattern does call for a seven inch zipper for the change pocket and that's what I'll be using and I used on all of my samples. But if you are adding in some extra tape, I will add a little note in the video of when to trim off that extra tape, just for anyone who wants to add that extra tape. 
Now to pair with your zipper tape, you're gonna need one pull per zipper. Mine are these half cylinder pulls by Sally Tomato. Now something I wanna note is for the change pocket zipper, you're gonna need to use a slim pull less than a half inch in width to be compatible with the sewing technique we're gonna use to do the zipper pocket. So bringing my example back into frame, when we're sewing this, the pull has to be able to fit inside of here so it can be slid right through. So it has to be more of a slim pull to be able to slide through here. Now, this is something that Teresa at so Fun here on YouTube let me know about in my previous zipper pocket tutorial. She tried out the technique I used and let me know about the size of the pull. So thank you so much for to Teresa for letting me know. So a slim pull under half inch in width is best for the change pocket and any pull can be used for the zipper pocket up here on your wristlet. So you can choose your pulls accordingly. Now I've already laid them out on the table, but you're next going to need some size 20 or 12.5 millimeter fashion snaps. Mine are from the brand Cam Snaps. I have my caps, my sockets, my posts, and my studs. So I have all six sets. You're going to need two for each flap. So one, two, oops, three, four, and then you're going to need another two for in here. So to keep it folded. I'm now also going to move my wristlet out of the way because we don't need to show it anymore on frame for the next few pieces. So I'll get my snaps out of here as well. Next for interfacing, you're going to need a cotton woven interfacing such as SF101 or something similar. It's a fusible one. And you're going to need to cut two pieces of piece A. Again, that measures 11 and a half by 8 and a quarter. The next piece of that same interfacing is actually an optional piece, and that's to interface your wristlet base, your piece B, which measures 12 and a half by eight and a quarter. So you'd cut a piece of interfacing to the same size and interface it to the wrong side of that piece. And that's an option for those of you who are using a really lightweight faux leather or faux suede in order to add more structure to the bottom portion of your wristlet. If, if your faux leather faux suede is really flimsy, it may end up causing the corners in this part here to be really flimsy. So you may want to interface it to add a little bit more structure. But again, it's optional. I won't be adding any to mine. You can see kind of the thickness of my piece here. Okay, so that's just an option and you can choose to do so if your faux suede or faux leather is a bit lighter. You'll need two pieces of piece J, so it measures five and a half by seven and a half, and this is actually our flap interfacing. It just measures a quarter, or sorry, a half inch shorter, so that we don't have the interfacing in our seam allowance when sewing the flap with the zipper. So that's for our flap. Finally, of that same SF101, you're going to need eight pieces cut from piece L, which measures one and a half by one and a half. And these pieces will be used for snap reinforcement. The last piece you're going to need is a piece of fusible fleece cut from piece K and that measures one and three quarters by 17. This is actually for our wristlet strap. I'm using Pelon 987F but you can use something similar. Some additional supplies you may need is a snap press, pliers, or the tools to install your snaps with some compatible dies, some quarter inch double sided basting tape, minus by Unique Sewing, but Dritz also has some, thread to match your fabrics, an erasable marking pen, a handmade tag if you choose to add one, and a rotary cutter and ruler. Beginning with piece A, which measures 11 and a half by eight and a quarter, we're gonna fuse the wrong side of our print A pieces to our interfacing. So the wrong side to the glue side. We're gonna take it to the iron and we're gonna fuse it. If you opted to add interfacing to your print B wristlet base, the 12 and a half by eight and a quarter inch print B piece, you're gonna fuse that to the wrong side as well right now. You're then gonna grab your piece D cut from print C, it measures six by seven and a half, as well as your interfacing, which measures five and a half by seven and a half. And we're gonna do the same thing, except with these pieces, we're gonna flip to the wrong side, and we're actually going to center our interfacing on the wrong side. So you want the glue side of the interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric, and we're actually going to center it. So as you can see, it'll be about a quarter inch shorter 
on both sides here and here. This is the this is the seven and a half inch edge and this is the six inch edge. So it'll be centered here and you're just going to fuse that in place for both pieces. With your print C piece, measuring it three and a half by 17, this is also piece E, we're gonna flip over to the wrong side. As you can see here, I already have some creases. That's because I already pre-pressed mine, so it's a little bit easier for me to show you this step. But what we're first gonna do is we're gonna bring these outer 17 inch edges together. We're gonna fold it in half with wrong sides facing. We're going to press the center fold right here to crease it. Once it's pressed, we'll open it back up again and bring these outer 17 inch edges into that creased middle on both sides, just like so. You're gonna want those raw edges to meet. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna press those outer folds to crease them as well. Then we're gonna open it back up so we have all of those creases visible. And taking our fusible fleece piece, measuring one and three quarters by 17, this is piece K, we're actually going to center it inside of those outer folds. So if you see here, we have our outer folds. This should fit right in the middle perfectly all the way along. And we're gonna fuse that in place right here. So the fusible fleece will have the glue side facing the wrong side of your fabric. Once your fusible fleece is fused in place, you're gonna bring those outer edges back to the middle. So recrease or repress those outer folds. So just like so all the way down, I have to go press mine again. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it one more time in half for the entire piece. So I'm gonna go take mine to the iron and I'm just going to press that so it's nice and folded. Now that it's pressed, your wristlet strap will look something like this. You're now gonna grab your three quarter inch swivel hook and we're going to insert the strap. So just like so, and we'll leave our hook here in the middle. We are going to be setting this aside since we'll be sewing it more towards the end. But if you'd like to, you can actually add some quilting clips along these open folded edges just to hold them in place until then. We're now gonna grab our print B piece, measuring 12 and a half by eight and a quarter. This is piece B. And we're gonna copy our zipper change pocket markings right here to the wrong side of our piece. Now you can use a technique that you prefer, such as poking holes in the corners and marking them, then connecting the lines or using tracing paper. I know everyone has different techniques of how they like to transfer markings from their pattern templates to their materials. But what I'm going to be doing in this video for those that don't have the pattern templates or don't like copying the markings over since the paper isn't see-through, it can be quite difficult sometimes, we're actually going to manually mark them. I'm gonna provide all of the measurements of where this is located, its size, and how to draw all of these lines. That way you can do it manually if you prefer. So we're gonna go and do that now. Flipping over to the wrong side of our print B piece, we're gonna start by binding the middle of the two 12 and a half inch sides, so here and here, by either measuring with a ruler or our cutting mat, or by folding our piece in half, just like so with right sides facing, and marking that fold right there, so the middle. So you can do that here and here. You're gonna put a little marking. You're then gonna grab your ruler and a marking pen and we're actually going to connect those markings to mark our center. So that's the middle for me. So I'm just gonna connect those markings, my marking pen. As you can see here, I have my line. Then from the middle, I'm gonna decide which side I wanna add my change pocket. Since this isn't directional, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to mark my next line an inch and a quarter down because that's where my change pocket is going to start. So my ruler is now aligned an inch and a quarter down from the center, and I'm going to draw my line. But something I want you to pay attention to when you're drawing these lines is these outer parts of your ruler. You wanna make sure that it's nice and straight, that the line you're drawing is at a 90 degree with the edge. You don't wanna accidentally put your ruler like this, not realize that it's crooked, and then have a crooked change pocket. So you wanna make sure it's straight with that outer edge and also aligned with that center line. If it's not, you may wanna erase your marking and try again. So mine's realigned, so I'm going to draw that next line. 
Once those two lines are marked, it'll look something like that. We're now gonna repeat the same process, but we're gonna draw a line a half inch down from the line we just drew. So the same exact way of lining up our ruler to make sure it's straight. So as you can see, mine's lined up, so I'm gonna draw my line right there. I'm just gonna do it off camera so I can see a bit better. That's that half inch line. Now we drew that second line or that third line half inch down from here because that's the width of our pocket. We want that pocket opening to be about half inch. So that's why we drew it at half inch. We're now gonna draw the outer points here where our pocket's gonna start and end. And we want those to be one and a half in inches in from that outer edge. So we're gonna draw it now, so right here. And right here and that'll make our pocket here five and a quarter so our pocket will measure half inch by five and a quarter now what we want to do next is we actually want to draw a line right through the center right through here so it'll be about a quarter inch in from here and a quarter inch in from here so right through so just like that so now my pocket is divided. We're now gonna do the outer triangles that you see on the pattern piece. So the point of the triangle is actually 3 eighths of an inch in from the edge. So I'm just gonna mark, that's, that's a quarter inch. <laughs> so I'm just gonna mark the point of where the triangles are going to be right there, 3 eighths. Now you can use a ruler or you can just eyeball it. You're gonna draw the diagonal lines connecting that point there to the corner. So like that. Like this. And like this. Now, as you can see on our template, our, our markings here match our zipper change pocket right here. And you'll notice that you have some sewing lines and you have some cutting lines. So we'll actually be sewing the outer rectangle of our pocket and we'll be cutting out these inner lines here. We won't be cutting out the line inside of the triangles inside here. So only like this, like this, that center line from point to point of our triangles, and then these diagonal lines as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out following the cut lines on my pattern template. This is what your pocket opening should look like all cut out. You can see the triangles are cut out and that line is cut down the middle from the point of each triangle, not any further. We're now gonna begin installing our zipper to our change pocket. I do have a detailed tutorial on this type of zipper pocket on my channel. It actually uses the exact same measurements I'm using in this video, so you can check that out if you're interested. But we're gonna grab our zipper tape. Taking that same print B piece with our pocket opening, our seven inch zipper tape and an erasable marking pen. We're now gonna add some additional markings that are gonna help us center our zipper tape within our pocket opening. So we're gonna start with our zipper tape and we're gonna mark a line just under an eighth of an inch in on both sides. So my zipper tape is kind of dark, but if I bring it a little bit closer, you should be able to see my line. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the middle of the zipper tape on both sides, so both seven inch sides. You can do this by either folding your tape in half and marking the fold over here to so the middle or by using a mat or a ruler and measuring. So it would be three and a half. So right in the middle here and here. Once the tape is marked, we're going to now mark the middle of our pocket opening. So again, you can either do this by folding it in half. I actually did mine by folding it in half, folding it in half and then aligning one half right here marking that center and then transferring the marking to the bottom right there. You can also measure with your ruler again and mark that middle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide our zipper tape but because we're gonna be sewing each half of our zipper tape separately to our pocket opening. We're only gonna need one right now, so I'm gonna set this one aside for now. With your double-sided basting tape, we're now gonna apply some to the edge of our zipper tape right along here. Now, before we apply the double-sided basting tape, something I do wanna note is that if your faux suede or faux leather will get damaged by the double-sided basting tape, 
you only want it to be applied within the rectangle of the pocket opening. You don't want that double-sided basing tape to extend anywhere beyond because if it damages your faux leather, faux suede, you'll see it. So on the right side here, if it goes beyond the pocket opening, it may show up if there's any damage from the tape being removed. So to prevent that, what you can do is actually line up your zipper tape here with your pocket opening, so those center markings. Grab that same marking pen and just mark where the pocket opening starts and ends and then you'll only add your double sided basting tape within that area not any further that way none will get stuck outside of here and you won't have any damage if your double sided basting tape gets a little too stuck and you have to peel it off so i'm going to do that now i'm going to grab my double sided basting tape You can see here my tape is applied and it is nice and clear so I can actually still see my line underneath. It might not be able to be picked up on camera though because of the shine of the tape. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to start with the bottom of our pocket opening and we're going to work from, so our zipper is going to go on the right side with the right side of the zipper so the teeth facing the right side of our material, our print B fabric. And we're actually going to align that center marking. So I've aligned my center marking right here and now I'm just going to continue to stick the rest of my print B pocket opening this edge here to my tape along that marked line. I'm just going to stick it there along the line all the way across from here to here. Once that's stuck it'll look something like that nice and even all the way across. You're now going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to sew all the way across from corner to corner along this line. I do recommend using a zipper foot because you're going to need to get really close to these teeth that are actually right under here. So I do recommend a zipper foot and make sure to backstitch at the start and end of your seam. Once sewn, it should look something like this. You can now remove that double sided basting tape from in here. You're then going to grab your print D piece measuring three and a half by seven. This is the change pocket lining bottom since we are attaching it to the bottom half over here. We're then going to flip over to the right side. I'm going to take this label off. And we're going to align our lining with right sides facing that zipper. So you want these seven inch edges to align. And if you're using directional fabric, you're going to want to align that top edge. Just going to get some quilting clips and clip that in place, making sure that it's nice and centered. We're then going to flip back over to the wrong side. We're going to push our clips through, It'll make it a little bit easier when we sew it. And then just like before, we're going to sew along this line. But since we already have a seam there, we're going to sew in line with the seam we just sewed to secure that lining to our zipper. Once attached, this is what your lining should look like on the right side. And it'll look something like that on the wrong side. You just sewed in line with the same seam. You're now going to repeat the exact same steps with this half of the pocket opening, so the top half. Your remaining half of the 7 inch zipper tape that has all the markings. And piece H, or the change pocket lining top, it's the print D piece that measures 4.5 by 7. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to attach your double-sided basing tape, align it with this edge, sew across on the wrong side from corner to corner. You're going to re you're then going to align your lining on the right side. You're going to line that top edge, that top 7-inch edge with the zipper tape, and you're going to flip back over to the wrong side and sew along that same seam. I'm going to go ahead and attach all of my pieces and I'll be right back. The lining is now fully attached. It should look something like that on both sides. Next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring our lining and tuck it through the pocket opening toward the wrong side. So both the top and the bottom. Once the lining is through, you're also going to push your zipper tape, so the ends of the zipper tape through one by one on both sides. So it should look something like that. 
And what we're going to do is we're actually going to push the triangles from the outsides in. That way when we add our zipper pull through, they don't get stuck on it. So just like this. And if you'd like, you can actually now go to the wrong side and press your lining away from the zipper. Once it's pressed, we're going to actually begin inserting our zipper pulls or our zipper pull. The lining for my change pocket is now pressed and out of the way. I have my zipper pull here that's less than half inch in width. I'm now going to insert it into the change pocket zipper. So when you're doing this, you're going to want to decide which way you want your change pocket to close toward. I want mine to close this way and open this way. So I'm going to be inserting my pull from this side. I'm first going to put insert the pull and pull it all the way through to close the tape entirely. Then I'm going to reinsert it from this side, leaving it in the middle. And each time I do so, I'm going to make sure not to catch these triangles. I want these to sit on top and not get snagged because you don't want these corners in here to rip before we sew them. So I'm just going to start inserting my pull from this side. So making sure it's nice and even. Just going to push it through using the dangling part of the zipper, the half cylinder part. And when I get to this side, I can actually already push that end through and it's out. I'm now going to reinsert it like I said before. And I can see here that my tape is nice and even in the middle. So my pull is now properly inserted. Once your pull is inserted, you're going to tuck these triangles underneath just like so on both sides. And doing one side at a time, you're going to lift this over and you're going to sew across following that line. And if your line is missing, you're just going to go from corner to corner from where you sewed right across here, making sure to backstitch. And this seam here is actually going to be visible in the lining. So you're going to want to use a bobbin thread that actually matches your zipper tape so that it blends in. And make sure when you're doing this also that your lining is nice and flat up here or back here because you don't want it to be pulled in and then it gets snagged like this. You want it nice and flat on the back side. So you're going to do that for both this side and this side. Once those sides are closed, it'll look something like this. And this is what the side will look like. So that's where you'll have sewn across. Now what you're going to do is you're going to sew a top stitch all the way around the pocket opening and you're going to want to use a bobbin thread that matches your lining because this will be the top stitch for the lining as well. I've just done my top stitch around my pocket opening and it looks like this. I did have to move my pull out of the way at some points just to get around a little bit easier. But yours will look something like this. And as you can see on the lining side, the top stitch also caught the lining, so it'll keep the lining fabric away from the zipper inside as well. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to stay on the lining side, and we're going to take our larger print D lining piece, the one that's four and a half by seven, we're actually going to fold it over so that the right side of the fabric faces the other lining piece, the three and a half one. We're going to align those sides, the bottom and the other side, so all of this here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to sew the sides and bottom closed. And to do that, we're actually going to keep our fabric like so. So move this to the side. We're going to sew the sides closed with a half inch or five eighths seam allowance, depending on how much you fabric, how much fabric you have in here. And you want to get as close in here as you can without catching it. Okay. And you want to make sure you also backstitch on top of the zipper and up here. So the start of your seam on the bottom. You're actually going to sew the bottom closed with a quarter inch seam allowance and when you're turning if you decide to pivot or if you decide to stop and end your seam here you want to make sure that you backstitch a ton on these corners or you can even sew a second seam on this on this bottom edge because this is going to hold change and change has a lot of weight and you don't want this to come apart and all of your change starts to leak inside of your wristlet you want this to be really nice and secure in here to be able to hold all that weight so you can decrease your stitch length and you can also backstitch a lot in here just to make sure and you're going to repeat the same thing you did on this side to over here. So I'm going to go sew around now to close my pocket. The change pocket is now complete. This is the wrong side with the lining fully sewn closed. And here we have the right side. You can see it's fully lined. You're then going to grab your two pieces of print A. 
that measure 11 and a half by eight and a quarter. And we're gonna attach one of these pieces to each eight and a quarter inch side of our print B piece. Now, if you have a preference on which print A piece is the front of the wristlet and which one is gonna be used for the back, you can decide that now. Depending on what you choose, you're gonna attach the front piece to the side furthest away from the zipper pocket and the back piece closest to the change pocket. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna align one print A piece with each eight and a quarter inch side. We're gonna align the bottom edge like that. We're gonna align those edges with the right sides facing. And then we're gonna sew across using a quarter inch seam allowance. You're gonna flip this one open and then you're gonna repeat the exact same thing on the other eight and a quarter inch side. You're gonna align the bottom edge of your print A piece and you're gonna sew across with a quarter inch seam allowance. We're then gonna press our seams open or to the print B side. Once attached and your seams are pressed on the wrong side, you're gonna sew a top stitch on the print B side for both pieces here and over here. The next step after doing your top stitch is if you have a handmade tag that you'd like to add to your wristlet, you can add it to the front side centered with that joining seam about one and a half inches in from the outer edge. So I'm going to fuse mine and sew it around. For this next step, we're actually gonna need a couple of things. So you're gonna need an erasable marking pen, a permanent pen, and this one is optional. Your paper piece template for piece A. Now, if you don't have the pattern, don't worry, I will be providing the measurements for what we're going to be doing. And your exterior that we've been working on. So in this step, what we're gonna be doing is forming the card pockets. So what we need to do is we're going to fold along fold line A, we're going to fold and sew a top stitch, and then we're gonna bring it to pocket line A, which will form our first pocket. We're also gonna do the same thing to fold line B, and then we're gonna bring it to pocket line B, which will give us our second pocket right behind the first one. So what we need to do for that is we're gonna to have to copy our markings to our pattern piece. I'm going to show you what to do for this piece here, and you're gonna repeat for the other print A piece on the opposite side because they're exactly the same. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to align your template with the joining seam you're gonna align it with the seam allowance line since we have sewn in a bit of our fabric in there. So align that seam allowance line with that joining seam. And then what you're, what you're gonna to wanna to do is either with an erasable marking pen or your permanent pen. For this step, I like to use a permanent pen because then these notches or these little dashes never go away. What you're gonna do is you're gonna copy the fold line A, you're gonna do a little dash. The placement line A, a little dash. Fold line B, a little dash, and placement line B, a little dash. You're gonna do it on this side, then you're gonna move your template over and you're gonna do the same thing on this side. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I already have my dashes marked. Then if you'd like, you can take your erasable marking pen and your ruler, and you can actually connect these lines right across with your erasable marking pen. That way, you can have the lines visible on your fabric so you can better visualize where to bring and fold everything. I typically don't do that, I just rely on the dashes, but you're welcome to copy those exact lines, but make sure to use an erasable marking pen. Don't use the permanent one for this. Only use the permanent for the small dashes because otherwise those won't come out later and you'll have lines right across your pockets. Now, for those of you who don't have the pattern or maybe wish to measure manually instead of using the lines on the pattern piece template, the first line is an inch and seven eighths up from that joining seam. From fold line A, pocket placement line A is three and three quarters up, so from here to here. Then fold line B is another half inch away from pocket placement line A, so it's just half inch up. And finally, pocket placement line B is another three and three quarters up, so it's right over here. So you're welcome to do those manually using your ruler or your cutting mat. You can mark those and do the exact same steps we're about to do. So once your markings are marked on both pieces, you're gonna actually press and fold along fold line A. So you're gonna take it to the iron and you're going to press fold line A just like that. I have it actually done on the opposite side so I could show you a little bit better. So you're gonna take it to the iron and you're gonna give it a good press along that edge. And then you're gonna repeat the same thing for fold line B. 
Okay, you're not gonna press or fold the pocket placement lines, only the fold lines. Once they're pressed, you're gonna take them to the sewing machine and you're gonna do a top stitch on each of the fold lines. So for this piece and for this piece. We've now reached the end of part one of the two-part sewing tutorial for the compact foldable card wristlet. If you're sewing along, you can find part two down below in the description box. I'll see you there.